I'm considering this video number two for this week, which is week nine. The first video um, looked over our bank, bank recs for, remember, we're doing current assets this week. And we focused on cash and updating cash with a bank reconciliation in our video one. Now in video two, we're still going to look at cash type items. And we're going to um, introduce two new accounts that go just underneath cash when you're looking at the T accounts. So if you were looking at cash and then it was account 100, petty cash very likely could be account 101 or 105 or whatever, something just as long as it's somewhere above our account receivable, if account receivable is 110. So what petty cash is, is just a separate um, stash of money, but it's in the office that is available for someone who has been given the authority to pay small dollar amount bills, where a check would be either just too burdensome and maybe too costly if we had to keep reordering checks. <clears throat> so the business keeps a set of cash in the drawer. Our cash T account would be what we have in the checking account in the bank. Our petty cash is what we have up in the office for some quick payments. So to keep track of our petty cash, inside our little petty cash drawer, we're going to have a little record sheet. This is not part of a journal. We're going to do the journal entry later at the point when either A, it's the end of the month, or B, when it's time to replenish the fund because we've run out of money. And whatever comes first, that's when we'll go ahead and update the journal. And we're going to use whatever's on this record sheet to, you, to update the journal. Now, the one big thing that I want to get across when we have a petty cash account is we only update petty cash twice. The very first time we ever open up a petty cash account, that'll be, that would be the one instance. The second instance is if we ever need to change that original amount. Because if, say, we put in $100, if $100 is too much or too little, and I want to adjust that to maybe 150 or down to maybe $60, that would be the only other time that I would ever adjust petty cash. I do not adjust it when I'm doing a updating journal entry at the end of the month. As we'll see, what's going to happen is I'm going to debit those expenses that I paid for, and, and then my credit is going to go right to cash. Because to replenish that petty cash to start the next month, I would have had to have gone down to the bank, take, taken out some extra money in whatever it is, dollars or coins, and put it into the petty cash fund. So at the beginning of next, next month, the petty cash is right where it should be, $100. But yet my bank account shows I took out some money to get that petty cash to where it needed to go. So let's look at an example. Bring this down into one page. So our owner, Dr. K, remember we had an example a couple, uh, well, it's been a while now, probably five, six weeks ago. We had Dr. K office, and let's say Dr. K now wants to have a petty cash fund in his office, and he sets it to be $100. And we actually started that petty cash fund right now today on January 1. Now at the end of the month, on the 31st, it's time to replenish the fund, and we only have $22 remaining. So what I want us to do is record the initial journal entry to start up the fund, because it's the very first day it ever started. And then we're going to record these items that were on the receipt next to the petty cash and actually show them in a journal entry now that it's the end of the month. So my, what I need to show here, and I, I need to update my answers, is my first journal entry is actually on 1-1 one -one, would be a debit to my petty cash fund for $100. And I'm actually going to credit, go down to my bank, take it out of the checking account. Therefore, I need to credit my cash by $100. My next entry, which would have occurred on 1-31, at the end of the month, I need to show that I incurred 
these four items. I need to show that I incurred the supply expense that I paid 947, my postage, my office expense. We I set up here that it was lunch. The owner took out some money out of the petty cash because he needed some quick cash. If I add all these up, knowing that I only have $22 remaining in my cash fund, so that means I spent 78. If you take, let's bring up a calculator, and I, you won't be able to see this, but I'm going to do this off to the side, and you should do this at this point too. If you take 947, add in the 1263, add in the 1225, and then add in the 30. Remember, the cash fund says I only have 22 left, therefore I spent 78. But when I add all these up, I'm only coming up showing 7335 being spent. So therefore, when you take that 7335 and subtract out what is missing, because I still need 78 total to get me back up to $100, I have $4.65 that I don't know what happened to it. Somebody paid for something small or one of these numbers was written down wrong. I just don't know. So when we don't know, we have a brand new account that I'll introduce in the next section, but it's good to show it here too called cash short and over. And I capitalized the short this time because that's what we are. We're short. And whenever it's a short, cash short, it's treated just like an expense. Just like if this number, this 465, would have been added up in here into the office expense. It's going to be treated this exact same. It's going to show up on the income statement. It's going to be a 500 type account just like any other expenses. And then to get my petty cash drawer back up to $100, I need to go back to the bank and withdraw $78 out of our checking account. That's why I show a credit to my cash here, because I actually withdrew money out of the checking and put it into petty cash. So when I start the beginning of the month, I still have $100 that I originally put in there. Therefore, no transaction affected petty cash. The second item that I wanted to look at in this video of the two is, cha is the change fund. You're going to see that the change fund is almost identically done to the petty cash. They're just for two different reasons. The change fund is out there to uh, make change for our customers uh, and then so uh, in our register. Now, this one is the change fund is located just like petty cash. It's just below our cash T account of cash of say account 100, and just above where the account receivable would normally lie, say 110. So this one could be account 102 or 101 or 105, somewhere in that area. So again, we're treating it very similar to our petty cash. We're only going to journalize it twice, one to set it up, the original amount, and then one to change it if need be. We are not going to adjust or use change fund in any of our day-to-day -day journal entries when we have sales. So here's my uh, cash short and over just to kind of give you a brief overview. If you need to pause the video to write these down, go ahead and do so. But basically what these are, these are like an expense account. Cash short, when your cash on hand is less than what you think it should be. Because when you count your register drawer, if you should have 100 bucks, but you only have 95 somewhere you gave somebody too much change back, that's going to be considered an expense called cash short. All right, let's look at my, um, my other example to, to see how this is journalized. <clears throat> we opened up a brand new change fund, so again, we're going to practice journalizing, opening up a brand new um, account for $150. And then at the end of our very first day of sales, let's say the next day on the 2nd of June, we had 760 in cash total, 460 in visa receipt, people paying with their credit card. And when I rang up the register, it says, okay, you made total sales of $1,050. Hopefully your cash and visa um, receipts add up to that. So now what I want to do is I'm ready to record our journal entry. The first journal entry is just like the petty cash one. 
I'm going to debit my change fund for that initial opening dollar amount, go down to the bank, take out the money in coins and dollars to get 150. Now, where petty cash and change fund are a little different is, of course, change fund. We're going to be constantly updating our uh, journal entries, again, not the change fund, but we're going to be taking this 150 out and moving it into tomorrow's change fund. So when I counted 600 or $760 cash, well, that 760 included my original amount. I can't count that twice, so I can't have a journal entry for 760 in cash. I've got to take the 150 out and move it into tomorrow's change fund. Therefore, I have a change fund balance of 150, which is what I should have. So new cash that came in is really only 610 because I took off the 150. And then also coming in is I had uh, Visa payments. Visa is going to be sending me a check for $460 because of my customers buying on account. Now, I don't want to just assume that these two added up are what I made in sales because there's a good chance that somebody made a mistake in the cash transactions. So I need to rely on my register, and the register told me that I had sales coming in for 1050 well, now, when I add these two up, I actually get 1070 So in this instance, I actually had too much cash. I didn't give somebody enough money back. And as long as I'm an honest employee, I'm not going to take that extra 20 and put it in my pocket. It's going to stay with the business, knowing that a mistake was made. Maybe the customer will come back, but it's going to be hard to prove. But what I call that is our cash short and over again, but this time it's the over that's emphasized as a credit amount. I'm actually reducing the amount of the expense, um, we, and we combine these, so at the end, hopefully our cash short and over will have one final balance. And most likely, almost usually, it's always on the short side, so that's why it's usually an expense. Okay, this will uh, conclude our second video. Our third and last video is going to look at account receivable and bad debt as well as interest.